Hey gents, I'm here with Dave from Fragrance Bros, and I asked him to come on because I have a lot of questions about fragrance. You guys asked them, and so I feel like we can kind of learn this together. So Dave, how's it going? Doing great, thanks for having me on, John. Absolutely, so I think the best to start off with is your channel's a Fragrance Bros, but you know, how did you start it, and how did you get to the point where you are now in the fragrance community? So I've always been into fragrance on at least a casual level. I think a lot of guys at least are on, they like fragrances on a casual level. When I was young, you know, my dad gave me these drugstore aftershaves and a fake uh, razor set, uh, um, a fake razor set, and I would use those aftershaves. You know, one of them was like Old Spice and English leather and things like that. And I remember going to church one Sunday and drenched in Old Spice, and but I loved it. And uh, whenever I grew up, I would get gifts for Christmas or birthdays that were uh, colognes. So I think, like a lot of guys. And so I've always been into fragrances, at least on that level. Um, but it really kicked up when, um, before I got married, I met a girl and uh, I really thought, you know, I could be more intentional about this because, uh, you know, I, I think at least at that time, I thought that girls like guys smelling good. Turns out they do. And, <laughs> and so I was intentional about beginning a clone and wearing it. And so that kind of started the process. And years after that, I remember looking for a new cologne, wondering what to get, and I didn't like going to a department store and having to talk to sales associates, trying to push what they want to sell and not what's best for me. So at the time, I remember looking on YouTube, and YouTube was still pretty new around that time, it was around 2006 or so. And there were a couple of people on YouTube giving reviews of fragrances. And so after some time trying some things, I realized I could do this. And I launched Fragrance Bros with a friend of mine and we had kind of a, a discussion, kind of like Siskel and Ebert. I remember watching Siskel and Ebert as a kid, really loving the back and forth, having two opinions instead of one. And also too, I thought it was really good when they disagreed and it was really fun kind of seeing where you landed. So that's how it started. And it's been a little over seven years now and going strong. And yeah, loving every minute. So what was the first fragrance? So you said, you know, you had Old Spice and a few of those when you were younger, but what was the first one that you remember being the inflection point for like, okay, this is a serious thing? I, well, the first one that I got when I was talking about that, that girl that I was dating, that was Aqua Di Gio by Armani. And that one is a classic, it came out in like 1992 or 95, something like that. A classic, very uh, fresh, kind of aquatic type of scent. And um, it's still pretty good. Um, but that was one that really got me started in, into it. And a lot of people really loved it. And th that was one of those things where I realized also the power of scent with people around you, because I got a lot of compliments from it. Just a lot of people just really loved wearing it. So yeah. Interesting. And so I think the first place for me, I mean, I, I remember asking my dad distinctly saying, dad, I want to go get Axe. And he was like, oh, you want Fufu juice? And that was like, I think what turned me off from the very beginning from ever wanting sense. Cause like he didn't make fun of it, but the comment like hit me. And I remember I couldn't like, I was crying in the car because I was so upset that, oh wow. Uh, I like, so it wasn't traumatic. I mean, I look back on it now and it's kind of funny cause that's like, so my dad, but you know, Axe was the first one where, uh, and, and like I was right in the, the point in time when Axe came out and I was in middle school and the guys, everybody was wearing it. Um, and so that was the first one for me. But then since then I haven't really gone into the fragrance world. I don't know if you know, but you're one of the primary reasons that I have Mont Blanc Individuel. There you go. Uh, that's the main scent that I use and I, and I really like that. My wife likes and everything. And so it works out really well. So I do have a new, a, a nice big bottle of Mont Blanc. And so I think what is like the good place for guys that are curious about this to kind of start into that world? Because there's high prices on some of them, there's luxury, but then there's niche. Like what do you usually say is a good place for guys to start to get their feet wet in, in fragrances outside of your, your drugstore stuff? Well, I think usually what I recommend people do is, uh, for guys anyway, is go to Sephora. And Sephora is kind of just a makeup and beauty place, mostly for women. But a lot of guys don't realize that they have a whole section there for uh, fragrances and perfumes, but they have a men's section there. But what's great about Sephora is you can go up, they have a wall of fragrances there. You can go up to any of them and smell them. The sales associates there are pretty low key, so they don't pressure you to buy anything. 
and you can smell all of them if you want. They're usually test strips there. And if you want something, you can actually ask for any sample that you want there. And they'll give you usually like two or three. And uh, so they'll, they'll have little sample vials there and they'll fill them up for you if, they, if uh, you like something there. I think that's really a great place to start. Um, I would not really suggest go to a department store, mostly because what they're gonna push you is not something that maybe you like, but maybe something that makes them the most commission. So that's usually what they're gonna try to push on you. But if you go to a place like Sephora, where there's not much pressure there, I think that can kind of get people's feet wet and you can kind of see what you generally start to like. And Sephora doesn't have everything. They just have kind of just a small snippet of things, but you can kind of see at least a few there. Now that'll get you uh, going down the rabbit hole at least. Okay, and I hear you in your reviews, you talk about like the top notes and the base notes, like what's some of the vocabulary that guys get familiar with as they're looking to learn more about scent? Oh, well, there's a, I mean, with everything, there's a whole slew of vocabulary words that you might not be familiar with. But the ones that you mentioned are top notes, uh, middle notes or base notes. And those essentially are the way that a perfume is constructed. So uh, a perfume is constructed with ingredients and each of those ingredients is kind of considered to be, it's loosely considered to be part of a pyramid. So the top notes are the notes that last um, the shortest amount of time on your skin. They burn really quickly. Some notes like that are like citrus notes. Those type of notes will last only like an hour, two hours max. Uh, middle notes are notes that are like herbal notes or floral notes. Those will last a little longer. And then the base notes are notes that last a long time. Those are notes like sandalwood, uh, deep woody notes, um, any kind of musks, um, vanilla, uh, those type of things, those last a long time. And every perfume has a mix of all three of these. And a perfumer, when they go into creating a fragrance, they're not necessarily thinking, I need to make a pyramid. They're thinking, I'm trying to make a fragrance that, that maybe changes from beginning to end, that evolves over time. And so they're gonna have a mixture of all three of those types of, uh, of notes to create a fragrance. Um, there are other things too, like you'll see Eau de Cologne, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum. Those are different concentrations of fragrances. Um, I mean, I'm, there's a million different uh, words that I could think of, but yeah, those are just, just some that immediately come to mind anyway. Okay, and then what I also find fascinating as I've learned through your, your channel too is the people who create the scents, they're almost like movie directors. It's like, I'm into film, so I know certain movie directors, but in the fragrance world, there's these fragrance designers that seem to jump houses and go through there. I mean, is there a good resource to like either find those or like track that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. One resource that is a great help for anyone that's looking into finding more information about fragrances is a site called fragrantica.com. Fragrantica.com is almost like an encyclopedia for everything about fragrance. You can go there and you can find your favorite fragrance. You can see what notes are listed in that fragrance. You can see how people rank the notes from strongest to least strongest. So you can kind of get kind of a general idea of how the fragrance type, how the fragrance smells. Um, they'll even have uh, when it was listed, um, the perfumer who made it, They'll have maybe other fragrances that smell similar to that. And then they'll have a list of people who are reviewing the fragrance uh, uh, as well on those sites too. I see, it's like the IMDB of fragrance. Exactly. Okay, very cool. So then what, do you, what is the biggest thing that differentiates like a Dior or John Barbados, that, like the big name brand designer sense from niche besides price? Because those tend to carry a higher price. But then, you know, I think of Creed is the main one that I think of as like a a very high-end, very expensive one, but I don't know if that's considered big. And so like, what, what do you see as being like, okay, here's here's the big guys, here's why they're expensive, and then here's some of the niche ones that deliver a lot of value. Well, presumably the main difference is the price of the ingredients. There are gonna be different types of ingredients that uh, different houses are gonna be able to work with. I, I, you know, like everything, they're gonna have a budget for how much they can spend on a certain fragrance. Um, for general designers, you're gonna have something that's gonna land in kind of the $100 range. So you're gonna have a mix of ingredients that's gonna, that's gonna work with a $100 type of fragrance. And is that, so for price two, that, that's $100 per 100 milliliters, what's the, because I've also learned that too, is like you can get a tester that's pretty small 
for a low price, but then it seems like 100 milliliters is like that standard for a lot of like, you know, main bottles, is that? Yeah, so 100, so that's generally what I'll say. So $100 for 100 mil is kind of the standard rate for retail with no discount. That's kind okay. of generally what it is. You'll find it less than that. You'll find it, you know, uh, as low as like $80 uh, for retail. Um, and that's, you know, full price. You can find these a lot cheaper on secondary markets, um, which we can go to <laughs> into that later. But uh, yeah, that's what you can find at like the mall. So you think 100 milliliters for $100 is a, is a little bit overpriced? I would generally say that it's usually overpriced depending on what you get. There are okay. some, right. there are some uh, companies like Chanel or Dior that they make exceptional fragrances and the value that they put into their fragrances is really worth it. Now, uh, the, okay. the presumption that the cost of the ingredients is more is really that. It's just kind of a presumption um, because it's not always that. So what I generally say is with a fragrance, look at the value of the fragrance less like you look at um, the construction of a car and more like you see the, um, like, like a craft, like cooking. With cooking, um, you get better food from someone who really understands how to make good quality food, even if they're right. using substandard ingredients. But someone who knows nothing about cooking can use the best ingredients possible and make just absolute garbage. So it, the skill of the perfumer is really the most important thing. So I usually say that you're, what you really want to pay for is the design, not the ingredients. There are some mm -hmm. fragrance houses out there that tout they have the best quality ingredients. But that doesn't really mean much if the design is terrible. So you have to look to see, you know, what are the, what's the skill of a perfumer? Are there certain fragrances that you notice that, that you like, that you really like, that are made by certain perfumers that now you can understand, now you like their body of work? So you can see where that skill goes into. So now you can, you can see, um, if you look on Fragrantica, you know, you can find the perfumer, see what they've made, and you can go kind of a little bit further and see where that quality um, of the design comes from. Uh, okay, that's fascinating. Because I, you know, I assume as you walk through an airport and you see the designer fragrances that, okay, those are gonna be very expensive because they're a designer fragrance. Uh, but it's, it's fascinating to know, that's, that's a great analogy about the, uh, about the food. Because that was my first thing. When I first smelled the Mont Blanc Individuel, I equated it, it smells a lot like the fragrance that my dad used to wear, the cologne that he used to wear. And my first thought was like, oh, maybe it's a similar, that maybe the person who designed Individuel did something similar for another house, and that's why it kind of had similar DNA. Um, when I asked my mom, she said she would just buy him whatever the cheapest one at Macy's was, and so I kind of debunked that pretty quickly, but uh, yeah, that was the first time where I felt like I'm starting to understand what's going on with fragrances because you've got you know the directors and the ingredients and that sort of thing, but uh, wow, it's, it's, it's great to know. Yeah. Okay, so then, uh, you start to learn a little bit more about the, the terms that are used and you go to Sephora and you start to uh, see that. It, are there like starter fragrances that you usually recommend to guys for like, you know, this is a really good general one or, uh, you know, this specific designer makes something that most guys like. I mean, is there something along those lines? Yeah, there are definitely some fragrances that I would recommend to people, especially that are just starting off. Um, uh, one that I can come that comes to mind is Loam by Yves Saint Laurent. Really easy to find. You can find that everywhere. That's a great fresh uh, scent with ginger and almost like an apple type of overtone. Um, that one's really great to wear in the office, casual settings, everywhere. They also have another one by Yves Saint Laurent called uh, La Nuit de Loam, and that one's more of a nighttime scent and is uh, kind of the brother to Loam. And that one has a little bit more of a spicy, somewhat woody uh, type of fragrance. That one's really great. Uh, Aqua Di Gio, I think, is still always classic. That one's a really great one. There's some other ones that are really cheap that I think are really good, like Cool Water, I think still holds up really well. Um, Mont Blanc Individual, like you said, is a great one that I can recommend highly. Smells fantastic. That one has just a really kind of dark, fresh, musky type of scent that I love that a lot. Um, some other ones, anything by Chanel is great. And almost anything by Dior is great. So if you can find anything by them, definitely check those out. And those will easily get you going in the right direction. A good place to start. Okay. 
And then the other thing I've learned is where to apply it, right? You want to put it like behind your ear, hot spots that kind of release it throughout the day? Uh, well, not, I mean, not really. So that's yeah. just kind of a, um, there's, there's not really a rule. I know some people say hot spots or whatever, but in my experience, I've tried everything and everything will get smelled. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't really matter. Maybe where. the one rule is not too much is the only one. Yeah, I mean, even there, I think that um, that rule is sometimes abused as well. So what I'll say is like where to, where to apply, I would say just experiment. So I've tried on the sides of my neck, I've tried my chest, I've tried my hair, the back of my neck, I've tried, you know, my knees, my elbows, my wrists. What I generally do is I generally do um, to the front of the neck and the back of the neck and, uh, or instead of the back of the neck, sometimes my hair and that's it. Um, and I'll do typically about four sprays. Um, what I'll also say too is, you know, test out your fragrances. If it's overwhelming, then yeah, don't wear a lot of it. If you're in a place that has kind of a confined space, like maybe an office setting, don't wear a lot. You know, just use your better judgment there. Um, but if you're out and about and you just want to smell nice, go wild, you know? <laughs> enjoy what you want to enjoy. It's just a fragrance. Um, and I, I generally say that most people will not complain if you wear too much fragrance because most people don't understand where you're smelling it and where they're smelling it. Most people, if you smell nice and they can smell you, they'll actually give you a compliment. It's usually the other way around. So I've almost never uh, been told I've worn too much fragrance. Almost never. The only times that's happened is with my wife and that's been in the car. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. That's been almost the only time. Every other time, if I'm wearing a fragrance that's loud, um, people have generally complimented me on it. And that's just because most people don't wear fragrance in a way um, that, is, that is trying to touch people. Most people are trying to wear a fragrance that is trying not to offend people. And I think that's fine in certain situations, but you don't have to be afraid of wearing a fragrance. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I don't wear the Mont Blanc as much as I probably could. Um, and so I'm curious now, I will experiment some more because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I heard about the hot spot sort of thing and that's good to know. Do you apply it directly? Like, do you spray it on or do you kind of rub it? Uh, Cause my wife, my wife's first thing was like, put it, she's like, put it on your arm and then apply it to your neck. So what I generally tell people is, you know, just spray the fragrance on your skin. Um, don't spray it in the air and walk into it. Don't spray it on your wrist and dab it. <laughs> um, because what that does is that divides the potency of the, the fragrance. So then you're splitting the, the fragrance into two spots, or if you're in the air, you're really dividing it, you know, exponentially from the air onto your skin. And if you spray it onto your skin, especially if it's just one spray, that's generally not going to be very loud. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, unless it's just a really potent fragrance. And that's why I tell people, test your fragrances, see how strong they are. Start with one spray uh, and see if it's super strong. If it's super strong, you know, maybe back down or, or whatever. But if it's not that strong, then you can wear more of it. But I generally go straight to the skin. Um, wherever you want to put it is fine. But yeah, that's what I do. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, I mean, the other scent that I have is uh, Maison Margiela Replica by the fireplace. Yeah. And so like, that's the like heavier winter scent and then Individual is like the, the lighter one for me. And so right now that's like the main two that I have. I have a bunch of testers that I try out and, and that sort of thing, but these are the ones I've really stuck to. How many fragrances do you have? Oh man, um, I think I have probably in the 40 to 50 bottle range. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, I, I don't really keep count, but that's in my kind of core collection and I'm trying to even pare that down some. But then I have, oh man, I have probably 200 bottles in the other room, a dresser full of them, of just stuff that I need to review or stuff that um, I've been sent for review at some point that is not part of my core collection. That's just kind of sitting there. Hmm. That is, yeah, I know, the, I know the struggle about trying to keep that kind of stuff organized. Yeah, right. I'm sure like, like how many pairs of shoes do you have? You know, so you probably have a core collection and then you have, you know, dozens of other pairs. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But also say too, you don't have to have that many. Um, every guy out there I think should have maybe two and mm -hmm. 
If you if you go past two, then great. But two, I think, is a great place to start. Yeah, I also think too. Like, I, th I feel like, and, and my dad had this was like almost like a signature scent. It's like when you you are a person that someone could identify almost by the smell because uh, you know you wear the same thing all the time and it kind of represents you. And so I like the idea of just having one or two signature ones that you always can go to. You know where to get them. Uh, you know you like them. You know your wife likes them or somebody that you're you know courting that sort of thing. And so. Uh, yeah, like I'm, I don't, I, I agree. I don't think you need that many. Yeah. So I mean, that's great for me. I feel like I got a little bit better of a basics. Uh, people could check out Dave's channel for a lot of really good information. If you're looking for specific houses, specific fragrances, he's got tons of reviews on there. He's been doing it for seven years. I've learned a lot from Dave, and I'm glad that he came on so we could learn a little bit more together. And so uh, go ahead and check out Dave's channel and I'll link to him and all the fragrances he mentioned below so you can go and check those out. So thanks for coming on, Dave. Thank you for having me. Really been, uh, been an honor.